why didn't they teach me this in engineering school? Like, these are concepts that I never even knew I needed to know. And nobody else in this world make the parts, and there's nobody to come up and take their place. Yep. Like, it has to be made. We're not digging up spacers from the ground or growing bolts on trees. Like, we have to make this stuff. No, this, this, we need it out of four finishes. It's like, it's literally impossible. You will never learn it all. You know, it's crazy. Came to Texas, said we're bringing all these crazy, putting crazy technologies on the floor, all of these different technologies on the floor. Walked and built this entire place, said where the walls are gonna be, cut the door open, talked about the machines and monsters coming in. Man, we're just gonna have this and we have this and like this and like this and it's just speaking it. And then all of a sudden, like, I literally look over and I'm like, we have a Swiss department. Oh. And a director of Swiss right there. We have an EDM department. We have monster machines. When I was speaking it, I had no idea what we were bringing in. And now we got these monster machines. And, and, and you're right here, man. I'm right next Dude. to you, buddy. I'm right man. next to you. Crazy. How is that possible? How it's is only it po my first four machines. Right? Remember that? A lot of machines. A lot of machines. That was back man, in the day. Back in the day. And it's crazy how life turns out right absolutely that was like back when you guys were in your 60s hey easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> i'm trying to keep it together dude be careful <laughs> easy, be careful easy, you'd easy. be in trouble in this one i know right <laughs> right no but i do think it is super cool how we have all these different technologies under one roof that we're able to teach everybody so we got something yeah. for everyone that's mm -hmm. in this yeah. trade isn't that true yeah, grinding cool. i mean that's that's one of those things is you know, machinists, right? You got lathe, mill, you know, Swiss, you got, but grinding, grinding yeah. that we have in a grinding academy. An that's additive. Fantastic. An you, additive. You know, you know what's crazy is that United Grinding actually came to us, Ooh. right? And I didn't know that. They're, they're like high level. It's like one, one main company, United Grinding, they own all the best companies. So Walter, you know, Studer, you know, Blom, all these different companies they own, it's all under one umbrella. And they were like talking about our academy and they, they knew that we were gonna branch out. So they were like, hey, what about grinding? And I always sub my grinding out. Yeah, you know what I mean? nobody. We, yeah, had, we had grinding work, but right, usually right. I sub that part of it out. And As so, do most shops. Yep. Yeah, and I'm not gonna be here and say like, ah, oh, I'm an expert at something, I'm not an expert. I know a lot about manufacturing and you know, making products and solving problems, but like, I just wasn't confident in that. Right. I'm not gonna put it out there, and then all of a sudden people are like, wait, you don't do that. You Did know? I sell you a surface grinder? Just a, like a little nope. Chevalier surface, nope. nothing. Nothing, man. Yeah, back I had day. one, yeah. You had one. But, but the, point, the point is, they came and said, you know what, what your academy is doing for the world of CNC machining, you're cranking chips, man, and it's sexy, and all these students that you have is incredible and grinding is one of the most important art forms in the world on Agreed. the planet these Agreed. planes do not fly cars don't run like m many of the things that we need don't exist without grinders like where you can actually precision grind crazy surface finishes and crazy tolerances and stuff. And then they started talking about there are people in this world that, that make parts and nobody else in this world make the parts and there's nobody to come up and take their place. Yep. So these art forms are literally leaving with the people as they die and retire and there's nothing anybody can do. Right. If you don't do something, like if we don't do something, this is a lost art form because there's nobody on YouTube for them. making videos. Yeah, good there's for them. There's nobody on YouTube making videos. How, how many grinding videos did you see before yeah. this? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Absolutely not. Because there's a bunch of oil and cooling and stuff. And after we talked, I was like, I was like energized. Like, we we want to represent the entire trade, make manufacturing famous, and just just go after it. So we said yes, man. Now we have a grinding academy that people oh. can just do it, you know? Yep. That leads me into saying like, you know, we started doing Swiss and hey, I'm not an expert in Swiss. I'm gonna look for the right people, surround myself and my team with the right people. And when then do you we think found we'll Donnie. Get one of those guys? I know. When will we get <laughs> one of those guys? I, am. I know. I know. That's my prayers at night. Like, Lord, send me an amazing 
Swiss machinist, but well, who you know, talks maybe too much? <laughs> maybe. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, always yeah, a good yeah, trade. Yeah. He could machine like his mouth runs there. We could, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> he would be making some money. Boy. I actually think it's funny that when you bring people in here and tour this place, that you consistently just like drop them off with me in the Swiss department, and then yeah. just come back in an hour, and I'm always just talking. And you guys are like, all right, all right, yeah, like all right, let's get away from this guy. I know. <laughs> Kel- Kelly will need my need like five minutes, and I'm like. All right, wait, wait, wait. When I get it over to Donnie, I'll be able to walk <laughs> away because he's just going to talk and not give anybody a chance to say anything. And then they have no choice. They say have to, to stay the customer, right there. did you know we have a Swiss department? I'll be right back. <laughs> I know, exactly. And I come back in 20 minutes and it's all good. The oh, best, yeah. The best. Oh, go ahead, Barry. I was just going to say it was funny. Even when we had the 100 people here from with Tornos. Donnie was able to entertain all of them yes. at one time. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, wait, 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 wait. I got to say something. I had like half of them, and then he had half, and then we switched on the tour, and he kept finishing. Oh, no. That means I actually talk more than Donnie. Like, that's a <laughs> that's problem. Crazy. It happened. Yeah. It that actually is a happened. Wait, wait, wait. Donnie stopped talking. He has nothing to talk about. And now you're waiting for me. We're waiting for Titan on the Dude. other side of the shop. Donnie's Dude. like, I'm out. Dude. I'm out. I already walked through the whole machine. I, I went know. from oil all the way to the spindles. What, what are we going to do? Well, I mean, how much can you really talk about making glitter? Glitter. Yeah, I mean, glitter. It's not that Pixie, exciting. Pixie dust. Yeah. Thirty-five axes glitter. on this crazy engineering marvel that you've never ever seen before. That I can go all day. To that. That I can go fantastic. all day. But, but at the end of the day, at the end, I of the do day. have to give Donnie his props. Nah. I'm just, <laughs> I can't do it. I was gonna do it, but I can't. No, I'm just I kidding. Just, but the best thing I heard, the best thing I heard, was the the story from yesterday. I, I mean, that was fantastic with Melanie. Oh, I know Melanie, bro, dude. What you you she had came nothing. at me, bro. You, she you, came at you. you. She did. She. You, we had Melanie was, in from from Heller yesterday. I know. Sweet little little uh, <laughs> German marketing genius, and and Donnie is usually pretty damn good at, at coming back with 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 a good little remark. She she lo- loaded you up. I heard. Oh no 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 no! Uh, I came back with remarks. Uh, I wasn't wait, just sitting there getting uh, slaughtered. Wait, I, I wait. know what this guy does. He's, he's gonna Stop. make it out like a. Psh- Oh, I think it was a push, push, so, push. So Mel- Melanie, I had it covered. Melanie will watch this and then she'll be like, I'm not marketing. I'm education. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. She That's actually my oversees education. So we're working on some great things for students out there and stuff. Sorry, and, uh, Melanie. With a, no, it's all good. <laughs> we came around this corner and Donnie did his famous welcome to the most su- stupendous, amazing you know, you do place it right. in you the do entire it right. facility. Ha! Ah! And she she looked at him and she's like, "What? The Hellers over there? Yeah, where's Barry? They, they make they make big chips. They got big <laughs> tools." And Donnie was like, "Uh, what do I say right now?" I can't remember he, what I said. I had you a response. did nothing. I, Your uh, mouth was open. Uh, that is you not literally what happened. stood there thinking, Lost "What is happening right now?" <laughs> You know what I mean? Which doesn't happen with it's Donnie true. very often. It's true. I, I'll tell you I'm what. pretty sure we had a conversation, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> the funny <laughs> thing is, banter. as much grief as that all of us, including oh, Melanie, give it. Donnie, when I first talked to him on the phone, I could immediately tell that he was going to be a good fit for this place. And it was pretty funny because he told me, there is no way I will ever leave the contracting that I've been doing except to work for Titans of CNC. Ooh. Yeah, so, for sure, for sure. This was like, this, I I knew I was going to take this job before I even came here, before I even met you. Well, you know what's actually crazy about he, that too? He, he literally <laughs> paid people to come to me and say, oh, this story. hire Donnie, <laughs> hire Donnie. <laughs> you literally can go, you can go on LinkedIn and you can see where I'm like, hey, I'm looking for the best Swiss guy. And then D- Donnie does a post and everybody's, doing the same pointed finger like <laughs> that guy do that guy yeah five people 100 bucks each i mean it's kind of worth it for the opportunity right that was you know? good that was yeah, good so, on your yeah, part played, easy money played my cards right and, and he was pretty money. smart too when i first talked to him like he must have slowed down how much he was talking because he was actually tolerable to me yeah. and you know <laughs> that uh, is changed great. when he got uh, yeah i was gonna I was say actually, walk through the door that was over <laughs> well on barry's comments right i when i first came here prior to me even taking the job i think i walked over to the Swiss department, and I think we had an hour conversation, maybe more. And, you know, Titan kept asking me, hey, Barry, have you talked to Keith yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't had a chance to because Donnie's got him. I literally told Keith, 
<laughs> Barry's like, if, if you anyone can talk Donnie, to Donnie you that could, long. You're only here for 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of people that want to meet you. You know what oh, I mean? I've been man. talking you up, and then you take all 90 minutes with Donnie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But one thing that it was, was good engagement, though. It was good. It was good a good conversation. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So we, I felt we, the need. We love Donnie. Donnie's good. But I think it's actually like a cool lesson for other people, too, because everybody talks about our culture. Our car culture is so crazy. Like anybody that comes in here and leaves the <clears throat> best team ever ever yep. every single person is crazy passionate about the vision everybody's just in sync and stuff and i think that uh i feel it i'm super proud of it and we've we've really worked on nurturing it one thing that i did with donnie and i've done with multiple people now is trust my guys so i'll have an idea i'll have a gut so i looked at donnie and okay i'll actually give this guy i, I might give this guy a shot so then I had him work with Dave, our vice president. Yep. And I had Dave call him and talk to him and 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 go first. So Dave, he has a, he's a good judge of character. Totally failed in this particular situation. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but no, he, he, he did. He came back. He's like, no, solid dude. He's quick, quick witted. That's something that um, Barry said the same thing. This guy's like us. He's quick. He, he he's knows from this stuff. trade. He knows knows the stuff when it comes to small things. You know what I mean? So I'm a good sales guy. <laughs> well, and that's what we just talked about <laughs> that at lunch, right? You got to be able to fit in. You know, first and exactly. foremost, if you can't fit in, I don't know if that door is going to yeah. remain open. Well, oh, it's yeah. it's a definitely a weird thing as like a machinist because uh, you know you first come here and you don't know what to expect and. I know you don't think it, but my first like three videos, the entire time, that is what I look like when I'm uncomfortable. I was so nervous. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with my hands half the time. Like <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, it, it took, an, it took like three months before I'd say I was actually like kind of comfortable making videos. And then a big moment I would say is when I went up to Titan and I was like, Hey dude, <laughs> my mom just sent me a cake for my birthday and uh I, you know oh. i'm trying to like you know lose a little bit of weight here so i don't want to eat it do you care if i smash my face in it and he was like yes <laughs> yes do that <laughs> and when i did that that was kind of the moment where i was like okay maybe i am good at this i i, I don't know you know i might have this creativity. in a bag creativity <laughs> yeah yeah that's an, you know in, in addition to our team's varied experience in the trade uh, one thing I really like is that we all have kind of a different personality type. So anybody out there watching may, you know, find themselves liking a Donnie video yeah. better because they like that personality better, or they may prefer Titans videos that or are Trevor. inspiring and, you know, or they love Barry. Yeah. Or they love, love me. Uh, yeah. Yes. There are some Barry weird, videos. weird people out there, but, <laughs> but it is kind of cool that not only do we have the yeah. Barry technology, but we have the different personalities. It's a, it's, if you get the, if you get the wrong person, one bad apple can ruin a bunch so yep. it's super important how many times I just have you finish seen on that? that topic right there yeah yeah, yeah a ton. it went from dave and then we shifted donnie over to barry because barry as a machinist i trust barry mm -hmm. so i wanted barry to actually talk to him figure him out and stuff so I, I didn't actually talk to him for a while and then uh yeah we did moxies together. Ooh, moxies. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to be a little shout out right there. That's our, that's our little favorite fave, right? Dude, moxies. I Dude, know. those you, steak bites. You, you <sighs> cannot beat moxies. Yeah. It is fantastic. Place. If They're anyone good. comes to town, it's moxies, right? And yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Every single or Bob's. Bob's. Bob's, Bob's is, is good. Oh, we went to Bob's last night. Mom and Chippenamati. I really feel like oh. I need to be included in more of the Bob's. You should mm -hmm. be, Barry. Absolutely. <laughs> you could hold your own. The conversation carries well with Barry. Exactly. You know? But he doesn't eat anything. That's true, You, too. Th you <laughs> would think that he eats a lot, and he doesn't. I know. It's the weirdest thing, but, you we know. Get, well, he goes to lunch they all the time, carrots. and then he's like, oh, I got dinner for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But. It's tough to keep this physique. I mean, I want our viewers <laughs> to feel comfortable. If everyone here was this ripped cut guy, you know, then what about the, the fat guys out there? You can stop talking about me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But I'm, I'm excited because oh. we have, we got what, four Tornos Swiss machines. Oh. We're getting Great another, machines. we got a couple more coming. Yeah. yeah. What do you got this coming in? Whole, what are the others? The whole shift. You so right now we got you know three dual channel machines which they're all pretty much the same just different sizes you know they have a little bit of different abilities and all that but uh the next couple of machines that are coming are really unique they have 
pretty much the maximum amount of features you can put into mm. a single bar fed machine. It really is. It's, it's insane. And, uh, yeah, when you look at Tornos's lineup, as far as a Swiss company goes, there's not another company out there that has that lineup. I mean, just yeah. this right here, like oh, amazing. what other one of the Eight Swiss spindles. companies has this and then all the other things, right? Like they do have everything and it's, uh, it's cool because I have this little area to myself and I get to learn and play around. Well, you know, it's it, it, when we had the group of Tornos guys up here, the VIPs, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you all still, the, cu the customers, the customers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you still don't realize how many Acme's, Brownies, Wickman's, Davenport's are out there still being run. And this technology, right? They're like, how do we replace that? And I think we had a customer up here looking to do exactly that. That thing's a beast. Oh and, yeah, and 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 it, and and if you are looking at older technology, this will take the place of six or seven, eight machines. Yeah, I mean that's the same thing to be said for like old cam machines, like Brown and Sharps. You know, yeah. like my dad's shop was all Brown and Sharps at first before I started. When I started, he already had a couple of Swiss machines, but you're seeing that all over the country. People are, you know, you're not going to find a young Brown and Sharp not setup happening. guy anymore. You're just not. Nope. And um, yeah, a lot of the single you know spindle swiss machines are replacing old screw machines that's what they do and this is obviously you know it's for the davenports the acme gridleys that's what this is going to replace yeah, yeah. And, and it's uh, got a smaller footprint too which is cool. it's I insane mean. actually like that's one thing you can't really tell from the videos i feel is like that thing does not take up a lot of space it for what it is not. like a, a a turret lathe is pretty much that width and if you add a bar feeder to it it's going to be that length so it's Taking up the room anyway. Yeah, and that's yeah. eight spindles. So yeah, I gotta say that machine has been the uh, that's been the wildest experience. I'm I'm all about learning new stuff. I mean, like you know, we had that one company come in the other day, and I was like, hey, send me the manuals. I want to come in on the weekends, read them, and learn all this stuff. And I'm all about checking boxes, right? I have spent the last like eight years. You know, the company I worked at, they sold. They got a, a you know they got Deuce on, and they started or DN now. But um, you know, they, once I saw I could learn five axes, the XMX, all that stuff, I started going in on all the weekends and learning. So I've always had these boxes I want to check, and you know, a multi spindle was definitely one of them. So it's cool to check another box and something you can learn. And so, what, what? How many bars did you say you could feed into that thing, dude? You can get so out of you out could, of you, control. You could get out of control. You could put any kind of loading mechanism on say there. Say one inch diameter. Oh, dude, like it's up to you like you can they were talking about how they have systems set up where they will pick up a bundle of bars just cut the little straps and yeah. just dump them into a thing that then loads that those bars right. into the bar loader right. it's like it's crazy it's, it's, it's meant to not need you yes it's it's like a cat yep. you know what i mean a cat doesn't need you like the multi-swiss is like that it just doesn't need you it's click, totally fine click click <laughs> when, when, we, when we were making the decision on on swiss everyone wants to work with us yep. everyone yep. you know we were talking to Sugami, we were talking to different people and stuff. When you start really looking into Tornos, things that I didn't know, one, they're the oldest Swiss CNC company in the world, right? What are they, 140 years old, They started, like I think it's 1882, and there's other Swiss companies that started in 1982. They have almost yeah. 100 uh, years real. on their and, competition. And in the US, in the US, they were always number one for for a long time. Long so time. if you go back like 40 years, 50 years, they were king. But at the same time, like Japan, they just started bringing in like cheaper machines, smaller machines, different things and stuff. And then and then people started like going after the price breaks and stuff. And then, but during that whole time, Tornos was still just building their arsenal and building this and building this and stuff. And today, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who's got everything like the technology they have from the nano like to correct? yeah no it's 100 yeah. correct they're there i don't unless there's some weird bizarre i mean you've been yeah. around this game a lot longer than it. i have yep. i haven't seen anything that has this range not this range you know, especially the next two that come in that will like really cap it off you'll have you know it's basically what it is is two triple channel machines so the nano dt gt they run two programs at once the next two we're getting run three and four programs at Jeez. once Four programs at once. It's insane. Which all, uh, three or four of which can cut on one spindle at the same time. So you can have two tools coming in and a front working tool all at the same time. That's crazy. They're, it really is. That's crazy. Really I think is. you're supposed to talk about one of them, right? They're, aren't they releasing it at Emo? No, no, no. It's not that one. No, okay. This is, a, this is another I'm, another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but think about that, right? The nano that's coming in is what, what what's the diameter? Uh, seven millimeter. Seven millimeter. All the way up to... Uh, 36, 36 is what's the biggest one we're going right, to get. Right, 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 yep. right. Crazy. I mean, and plus the multi. Yeah. I mean, that is just insane. Four programs in one run. Yeah, that's nine. 
But what's nice about it is it's not. So like, and I've talked about this in other videos, you know, when I first saw that this thing has nine programs running at once, I was just like, you know, just think about the sync codes, right? You just yeah. sync all these programs up and you Good don't have call. to do any of that. That is the best part about that. Like you really pretty much just program straight lines and simple moves. It, it, it isn't bad. Well, no, and now no you, wonder you're able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, th I think that's why a lot of people, that's why a lot of people are intimidated. Love it. I hate you sometimes. I love too. it. I love it. A lot it. of people are intimidated. <laughs> Great comment. But then once you dive in, you actually find out it actually is oh, not that bad. I think any Swiss guy I could teach that machine to in three days. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. In three days, That's I could teach incredible. that machine pretty, pretty yeah. efficiently too. That's good which, stuff. Which brings us to an exciting topic that we're actually going to spend the next years actually making a Swiss Academy. So nobody, like nobody ever has the excuse saying, I don't know the fundamentals. I don't know Swiss. I don't know how to program it. All these different machines, I've never ran them, so I'm not sure how to do right. it. Literally, we're gonna go through every single machine. We're gonna go through setups and programming and fundamentals and just anything you can even comprehend. And we're gonna basically teach all of it and put it in one place, the Swiss Academy, and it's gonna be like crazy. Swiss Machining academy is this the first drop com. are you dropping this right now all right no not been out we we kind of yeah. people know they they know what we're doing yeah absolutely. you know what i mean but but you're right because swiss happen, is though. a different animal right it is it is and i'm actually very lucky because at my old job you know we sold swiss machines and yeah. i used to teach a class i think it's was, it was every other month and it was four days and I, you know, i'd sit you down and i'd walk you through everything so i have a little bit of experience of how you know you'll get people in these classes who've been running Swiss machines for 10 years and they just want to know a couple of the real complex things that no one's sure. ever explained to them. And then you get someone who has never touched a machine. So you have that dude sitting next to that dude. How do you teach both these people and not waste anyone's time in four days? Right. right? So I've done that like a lot. So I have quite a bit of experience, you know, standing in front of people and teaching. So I have a really, really cool way. I want to break this academy down. And I'm really excited to do that just because like, I don't know. I loved teaching those classes. It's really cool when you see someone, they, they like, I mean, I'm sure you remember it as a machinist when you were like in front of a machine, you when didn't really you get what this thing was. you used to be a machinist, was. that's Ooh. a Swiss guy told you Did that. I say that when you, mm, I said, okay, maybe, maybe, my bad, my bad. <laughs> you definitely when you were spoke, sir. <laughs> yeah. When you were learning machining and you had that moment, I know you probably had it too, where you were just like, oh, I get how this thing works now. Like I, uh, wow. I, all these things like, like, you know, your end mills, drills, turning tools, all this stuff. You didn't really fully understand what and why right and then there's that moment where you're like oh i just get this and it's really yeah. really really cool when you're it's teaching fantastic. someone and you see them do that because it's like oh this person's life just changed light just and i on. just help them get to that point like i don't think there's a cooler feeling in the world so yep. the swiss academy for me is probably going to be and i you know i don't want to understate it but like or overstate it but i feel like it's going to be the coolest thing of my career is being able to Very create cool. something that will exist forever for people to learn and grow. I mean, even if, I'm, I know it's gonna be a lot more than one person, but even if one person watches this and learns from it and that yeah. helps their career grow, I feel like, I don't know, that's a really cool thing as a human being to do for someone, you know what I oh, mean? Yeah. One, one thing I wanna say is, think about the, the number 200,000. So we have 200,000 students that are actually registered with Titans of CNC Academy. That's crazy. So. You're going to be teaching a lot more than one. You the know what's funny? The whole world. You know what's the funny you say that? World. Is that people always are like, they come in here. And Titan is always like, he'll always say it. He'll be like, they just don't get it, man. Like, they don't get it. Because people the time. are always like, why don't you guys have classrooms here? Right. And Titan's like, you know, I'm not trying to teach 10 people, dude. I'm trying to teach a million. Yep. Like, I'm trying to change the game. And it's funny change how many industry. people just don't see that. It's like, yeah, we could put a little classroom over there. And by the end of my life, I will not teach... 5% the people I could if yeah, I just absolutely. make a good academy yeah, good call. and promote it. So it's it's crazy how sometimes you kind of have to explain that, you know? But Yeah, I, when I was just on the SolidWorks user group the other night, uh, I was explaining to them that we're an education platform. And, you know, there was a group of like 40 designers, not even machinists that I was talking to. And, you know, I was telling them the things that I talked to you guys about tonight, about how to design things better to be manufacturable, you know, as a machinist, I used to only be able to teach maybe five to 10 engineers yep. the, the things that I was trying to convey to them. But with our channel, I mean, I pulled up that video that I did on the uh, DFM 
and it's got a quarter million views right Jeez, now and like nuts. 90% of those people are designers and they're in the comments saying, you know, why didn't they teach me this in engineering school? Like these are oh. concepts that I never even knew I needed to know. And I think that's super cool that we're, you know, we're able to touch so many people and just make them better at what they do. That's Speak. a big one, man. That's a big one. That's one thing. Sorry, Keith, to interrupt. No, I, I heard good, you almost good. start right there, but that's a big one you hear a lot of machinists talk about. Like, how do these engineers come out of college, yeah, hundreds of it. thousands yeah. of dollars in Agreed. debt, and they don't understand what a maximum quarter radi maximum yep. corner radius is effects could have on the, the ability to produce something. That's a 100%. very simple concept that I think I understood when I was 13 years old. Yeah. Like, how are you coming Be out of college not getting this? So it's cool that you're actually doing yeah, that because that's huge. And you think that, you know, as a machinist, we've seen that our entire career. Correct. Almost yeah, every part you get. Yep. Yeah. And all these machinists in the world, all we're sitting there complaining like, gosh, you know, why don't these guys know that? And this is the platform that can fix things like like that. Well, well, I saw plus or minus a tenth one time on a snap ring groove and you go up to the engineers like oh a snap ring goes in there and you're just like what <laughs> are you talking about <laughs> like just spent eight hours dude trying to make this that's what I was going to say you look at all the colleges right I sold a ton in my 30 years to education and colleges that are you're going through engineering degree getting your ME and and nobody is going through machining courses. There was two two colleges that you had to have one year of machining after you got your engineering degree or you know during the engineering degree process. And I go, thank you so much. For you know, real. yeah, there, you, there's yeah. nothing more valuable Crazy. in the entire world of engineering than an engineer that understands how to manufacture the parts you got that they're it. designing. You got it. It saves tons of money. It saves tons of time, tons of headaches for us. So snap ring, ring grooves that aren't one tenth call outs. Yep. I know, right? Yeah. I, I, the coolest thing I actually ever saw the company that um, was one company I've actually been to that does it. There's an aerospace company in Michigan and they force their engineers to work on the shop floor for two years Ouch. before they can engineer a single print because they've known. They've been doing yep. it since, I think that company started in 1953. And um, yeah, it, it, when I saw that, I was like, this is how you do it. Yep. Like, it has to be made. We're not digging up spacers from the ground or growing bolts on trees. Like, we have to make this stuff. True, it's true. <laughs> they should care about the cost that's being added to their components. You yeah. Took so, the words out of my mouth. Yep. Yeah, that goes with tolerances or just plating you Material. know plating calls up call outs and stuff yep they're dealing with just different aerospace companies that are like doing magnet plate for like rocket parts and stuff and calling out a crazy surface finish you literally are taking the plating off there's nothing right. left no this this we need it out of four finishes it's like it's literally impossible 23 years old and never ran a machine and just don't understand but everybody learns man yeah 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 that's yeah. part about being a machinist is just teaching engineers what can and can't be done you know? and, and you never stop learning i i really feel like this. i've tried so hard to like learn as much as i can and it blows my mind how i'm just still learning like i was 10 years ago 100 percent. That, that actually makes it really cool in my opinion because like it's up to you if you want to go to a shop and, and learn their lathe there and just run that for the rest of your life that is what you can do and there is nothing wrong with that but if you also or if you, you know, on the contrary to that, if you want to learn, I don't know, all of the machines like I tried to do, there's nothing stopping you. EDM, you, yep, Swiss. EDMs, all that. You can learn everything if you want to, and you will never learn it all. Yeah. I don't think never. in 50 lifetimes you could actually learn everything this trade has Not to offer. So if you are a curious person who wants to grow and wants to learn, this trade's perfect for you, you know? And, and then... And then there's so many different variables and so many different, you know, sections where it's like, then you take each one to a higher level. Yeah. We all really, keep doing it. Sorry, keep, no, you, go, you go ahead. ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. I'll look at you say, I'll go. Look at I you think too. that this is one of the <laughs> only trades that's like that too, where you can 100%. be in this trade for yeah. 50 years and you will still not know half of it. So like it never stops. If you're a doctor or something, there's only so much you can learn about the human body before right. you know it all. Truly. But in machining, the technology advances daily, the cutting tools advance daily, the machines change daily. Millions of each. Yeah, There's, yeah. You go to IMTS and Emo, and you see booth after booth after booth, it's and crazy. it's just there. Where do all these machines go? Yeah, you know, and each one makes hundreds or thousands per month. Right, it's crazy. It is insane. People don't even know. You know, it's like all the machines, the tools, and everything. You have to just know 
Like you just have to have a head to be able to like look at the whole mess and then take out what you can and make something brilliant. And I think that's the gift of Titans of CNC is really like talking to machinists, you know, uh-huh. going and just saying, hey, never mind all of it. Just concentrate on this and we're going to make something and then just taking it one step at a time. And, 100%. Yeah. But, but that's the cool thing I like about machining. It's like, man, if you can get ahead for it and you understand fixturing and you understand the different materials and different things and you can solve problems, like you can write your own ticket. If you got grit and tenacity and you're willing to work hard and put the time in, you can write your own ticket. People, people are like, oh, it doesn't pay enough. Mm. How much money do you make your company? Are you a pillar in that company? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you want to make $100,000 like, and you have a head for it and you're willing to work, you can do it. You can make 200 I think I did a video you one time. You can even open your own company. Yeah. <laughs> I did a video one time. I said, could a machinist ever make $500,000 a year? And it's like, of course, that seems like impossible. But if you step onto a floor and they're doing $50 million worth of work and you increase productivity by 20%. Hello. You know what I mean? And you solve the problems and you're smart enough to like articulate like yourself and like tell the story of what you're going to do and put the plan in place and sell that vision and that whole plan and you get the opportunity dude you, you can make as much money as you can <laughs> think for sure up, you for know? sure and you i just know, gotta and, solve people's problems yeah you know? yeah and i know it's cliche because i'm sure everyone's heard the story before but i cannot tell you honest to god how many people i have met that worked at a shop bought a machine, put it in their garage. Mm. And then when I worked at the company I used to work at, I would go to their shop and I'd be like, wow, how'd you start this company? He's like, oh, just a mill in my garage. And it's like, what? Dude, you have like 50 machines now. How did you do that? And he's like, I just worked hard. And it's really, that's that's all that's being asked of you here. I mean, if you want to, you are going to get exactly what you put into this. Maybe not, you know, 50, 50, maybe not right on the exact margin. But if you put a lot of effort into this, it's not going to hurt you. You're going to grow. You're going to move on to whatever job you want. If you want to travel the country like I did, or if you want to, you know, even travel the world sometimes like I did, you can go do that. You can go learn whatever you want. You're not going to go to a company and be like, hey, I want to get really good at this and make you a ton of money. And they're going to be like, no. And if they do, then leave and go find another shop because there's tons of people who are going to hire anyone with that attitude and let them grow and become whatever they want. So it's like, it's not terrible. Think about that too, right? You put a machine in your garage, you work all these hours, you work as hard as we do or you guys do as machinists. I was only a salesman, remember that. (laughs) (laughs) But but, uh, what is the number one thing? Quality. As long as your quality is going out that door and you care about what leaves your shop that's going into your customer's hands, you will ne- Bill Selway said this to me early in my career, the, cu- the guys that focus on quality and on time delivery, they'll never be without work. And that is the case. If you do that job, you put in the effort and you focus on quality, customer service and on time delivery. There was guys I knew that did Boeing parts and I think we talked about it, Titan. Did you ever get a reject from, from SpaceX? I got a few from SpaceX. What, what was it? I was did, it, I did what, videos. Was it I did blue? videos I know one on you them. said there was uh, Blue Origin. We we worked with them over twelve years and without a single reject. That's what it was. And That's actually insane. That's insane. It That's was insane. like a crazy amount of work. And, and I stuff. know the quality that you guys focused on, and it it was of the utmost highest level. And it's and it, and it's like Monel. Inconel, right? A286, Not easy crazy, stuff. true positioning, right. all of it. Right. But that's why we're still great friends with them today. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, and absolutely. I love, I love seeing what they're doing right now. It's so, so good. Blue awesome. is amazing. I think it's because you looked at it like art. You've said this to me several times, and I really like that mindset. Like, it's art. You are taking this bad looking piece of stock. And you're going to figure out how to hold it and manipulate it. And if and it's 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 like a video game almost like you're you know, you're 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 figuring out how to create this beautiful piece of Manel or Inconel from raw stock. And it's going to go into a jet engine. Mm. But like it's 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 art. You're going to you know figure out the puzzle. You're going to figure out the way to do it. It, it. It's it's entertaining. You're not. It is. You are not going to be bored doing this. Nope. <laughs> like and, it, and it's it is a fun challenge. That's why I've always liked doing it. Don't get me wrong. We've all had those moments where we are just beating Abs- our head against the wall. Absolutely. But, you know, it, it's it's kind Same of Same like on the non-stop. sales side. Same on the sales side. It's, <laughs> oh, the sales know, side's all... <laughs> it, it is rough, but, you know, the great thing about day-to-day going and seeing a Barry, a Donnie, a Titan, 
is I got to see different parts every single day. My job was different every day I got out of bed and the first shop I walked into wasn't the same as it was the day before, the week before, the year before. It, it That is, again, the, the I think one of the, the best things about this industry is it is ever-changing. And, and I was going to say, you've seen the Machinist Handbook, right? I mean, th- yeah. that's why oh, yeah. no one will ever learn everything. <laughs> There's no way. There's and, not a chance. And every shop you go to, it's crazy. Like, I... One of the last jobs I did at my last job, and like this guy just kind of shows like every shop's different, right? They bought a like a, a the long version of the SMX, so it's just the B axis long version, yep. like forty grand and all these hydraulic holders and ER collet holders, and all the tooling was high speed tooling. I am not Ouch. making that up. Ouch. So you can be really good at the last three <laughs> SMXs you worked on, but at this place, guess what? You have to kind of go back in time, wow. no through coolant, none of that stuff, and like so yeah, you go around to all these different companies, it is. It is impossible to understand and imagine how all these companies do things differently. And and but you that's know, a nice it's thing crazy. about that. We, we talked a little bit about this at lunch, right? Being able to get some of those guys that were in a shop and get them outside of those four walls just to see what the difference is. You know, you think you might know, but we all just said there's you can't know it all. But seeing how different processes are, you know, run through a shop and and it, it's it's everything from. You know, I don't care if it's beginning stages of machining to cleanliness of a shop to oh, yeah. runners and, and quality and inspection and five S's. There's everything. And people, they, they don't see it unless they go out and explore a little bit. Yeah. yeah when you go, when you start going out to other shops, that's honestly what I think grew me the most as a machinist. hundred percent. Once I had been in a, you know, a hundred plus shops and worked in them and had to deal with the different types of toolings and coolants and work holding and just people and quality departments, you, you it, that really is what elevated my skills yeah. because everyone does everything differently. It's crazy. Yeah, I think for for me, like I did uh, Zinola manufacturing for four years, mm. you know, yep. and just a lot of prototype parts, NASA parts, crazy parts, you know, and just Siemens parts and always challenging, always challenging and, and figuring out how to drop times and run more parts and be more efficient and save the boss money and make money and that was that was like one of the greatest jobs that I ever had where I went from literally nine dollars an hour to twenty eight dollars an hour within a couple of years. Mm. But then we were talking about like hard parts and the art of it. I've always had that attitude, like as an artist and a creator, like I always get bored. I want to do better. I want to do greater. I think when I'm kind of jumping back on like the mistakes and different things and quality, because it's like I think you you make mistakes on things that you that you just don't care about or that you think you'll never make a mistake. Easy stuff. You know, but yeah. then I've always just gone, gone after the most difficult, the, the problems that other people couldn't solve and stuff. So I, I left uh, left Zanola and went out thinking, I want to run big machines and work on big, you know, floors and run big horizontal cell systems and, and did all of it and realized, man, they're not, that good no you know what i mean like i had a great back at zanola you know and all these people man they they think that they're on such a high level but from that day i could see it you know so going out and and jumping in with spacex and jumping in with these companies and and begging for the most the only way i could get in was saying look give me the work that nobody else wants yeah like nobody else wants like give me an opportunity on that yep and then just perfecting each one of those because that's when you make a reputation get the reputation why jump into the bucket that everybody else is trying to grab out of you know go out and do something that nobody else can do well because if you do that too i mean when projects come up and new stuff comes up who do you think they're calling you get the call absolutely agreed absolutely i have a very good customer i just talked to him the other night he was uh Great shop at Incline Village for many, many years and then picked up his machines and, and went to Maui and, and had four houses all automated set up on, on the island. And uh, he has done every place he's moved, every machine he's bought. He's got a call from a guy that left the company that he worked with, whether it was Tesla, Proterra, uh, Hamilton, all these companies that this guy worked for. He did such good work. It was the guy called him once he got to the new, hey, John, what are you doing? And John at Z-Tech, great, great guy, great machinist, and absolutely 100% did all of those different things for so many different companies because the quality was always there. And, you know, that's, that's not just true for business owners, but for machinists too, you know, if 
you are doing what Titan says and you're solving problems. And like, if you can walk into a shop and you by yourself can change the culture of that entire machine shop, just with your presence, that's when you really start making the good money. Absolutely. And you know, I've seen that before I went into a place once that was running stainless at two inches a minute. <laughs> and I heard, like I, I was told not to touch any of the machines for the first two weeks just to observe. And my desk was right out. My office was right next to this one Haas. And after I heard the sixth three quarter inch end mill break, <laughs> I couldn't take it anymore. Right. So I, I just walked out there and I talked to the guy and I was like, Hey, you know, what's going on? And he was like, I don't know. You know, this is just the program they gave me and I'm running it exactly how they told me to. And I was like, I'll tell you what, I'm going to reprogram this part for you. And we're going to do closer to 200 inches a minute. And he was like, that's not possible. And I was like, it is possible. Watch. And so when I brought the program out, he loaded it up and he saw we were going 300 inches a minute. Wow. And he was like, bro, I'm not even going to press start on this because I know it's going to break something. I was like, it's not going to break nothing, man. And so, you know, we ran it and the shop supervisor came to me and he was like, you know, our machines aren't set up for this. Our vices aren't strong enough for this. You're going to destroy everything. And I was like, no, nah, man. Well, four or five years later, when I left that place, that same shop supervisor came up to me and he said, Barry, I want you to know that I have never learned as much as I did from working with you. Badass. And it's that's like, awesome, it, that's right? what changed his mentality. And yeah. It's really cool to see when that happens. Well, right. What do a lot of these people get caught up in every day? If it, if it's working, it's making money. Yeah, don't let's, change let's it. Let's just not change it. Right. But the technologies, that's what we talked about earlier, right? Ever changing in this industry, you're never going to know it all. And as much as the technology change, was there, changes whether it's software whether it's tooling whether it's work holding those all go into everyday you know ideas of how you can better the part that you're running and it's not the same as it was five years or ten years ago two years ago yeah it changes so rapidly it I mean, does like um we have a video coming out where i'm doing like a bunch of plunging right and i had a really stringy chip just the way the form tool cut it just didn't give me a good chip but Tornos has a technology now that can break the chip in the cut. It, it you know, it creates little oscillations in the nice. cut, so it just flakes the chip. Nice. So when you're gonna watch it, it's just brrrr, and the chips just flake off nicely. But you know, five six years ago, you would have had to have like packed in. It just would have been terrible and just yeah. So it's it's non stop getting what was better. was the noise that made again? How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> or it would have been. Ksh, 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 You're right. <laughs> There's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are awful weird noises. Yeah, I, from yeah. the CNC get, machine. Very, very, I want to hear your Never best machining that. noise. Give me, give me that 200 inches a minute. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's for me, it's like, this is perfect. You that's know? a pretty, I mean, that's a pretty perfect. good. That's not bad right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's not and bad. the chips are still gigantic. Uh, but you know what that, I do that, like? That, that had to have been like a three eighths cutter. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> was, that, was, that was a quarter inch that cutter. Was quarter inch. But, well, you know, one of the sounds that does trip me out is when you're doing this full slotting, like with the TE, mm. and it makes that whistle. It's just like yeah. whistling and high, these high gigantic pitch. chips. Are I, I've always kind of seen it as like, why are you doing <laughs> this to me? It's got to show people what's possible, man, exactly. so they can make some money. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if, if you don't try to push the boundaries on stuff and you don't try to play around, I mean, yeah, I get it. If you break your tool and you have to put a new one in, it can suck. But it's better to break that tool at the beginning than to find out. Two years down the road, you've been running this at mm. half the speed that was possible. Exactly. And I've told people that so many times yeah, when I used to call. go to these different companies. It's like, I'd rather break all the inserts today because then at least next week we know we're at like 90%. You do not want to find out in two years that you've left like 150 grand on the table. Dude. Exactly. Like find that out now, get more machines and, you know, elevate your company. Like, you it's the way to go. Spend a thousand dollars in, in cutters to go ahead and make 150,000 in the long run. That's not, that's not a bad option. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, I would recommend that. <laughs> yeah. Good call. You might Super get a little good. flack right off the bat because you might not remember that three years down the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't remember. You met, you went through about a thousand bucks in, in in tools before you got here. I'm doing my best. Doing your best. So good. What a great talk, man. Today we we talked about motoring material and different types of materials and got Swiss Academy and Swiss. taking care of your customers. And that reminds me of a quote that we used to have mm. in our old shop on the say. wall. Yep. And that is. Take care of your customers or somebody else will. That's right. And uh, I think it's cool too. Like we all grew up and there wasn't a, ca there was no like YouTube and everything. Well, you're there pretty young. There was no young. internet yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. No. <laughs> Zero. So it's like now, before if you're a machinist, 
you could be a good machinist, but that doesn't mean that you could have your own company because you don't have what it takes to get the work and you don't even know how to get work and stuff. But with our videos on YouTube, we have videos on how to how to find customers, how to get work, how to quote, how to Set how to machine, building. how to thank you, how to do That's all of one. it. You know, CNC expert, CNC expert, baby. That's yeah, that's it. awesome. You that's know? awesome. Gigi, uh, see, we just passed twelve thousand people today, nice. right before this, right before we started this. Beauty. Super, super yeah. good. Beauty. That's awesome, man. Yeah, all machinists, everybody's super excited. People are getting their work. They're literally getting jobs from being in there, and. uh we got uh, some big things happening with that in this. We got our feed. Now you can actually, anybody can post and ask questions and that's awesome. Fantastic. But it, like, we got some big things coming in the coming months and gonna it's going to be that? like, you're going to drop it. People anything? are going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> For machinists, by machinists, get work, get hired, get certified, find customers, True. find vendors, it's find true. all solutions. of it. Keep find build, solutions. Keep building community. your profiles too. Keep you know yep. everybody that's out there. Join in. Build your profile. Show your part. Show what you're you're, you're doing every day. It, it is amazing. Some of the parts we've seen on there. There's some guys yeah. that have put some Crazy. insane, yeah. insane parts. Oh yeah, some of the works insane. Crazy. And what I really think is important to emphasize awesome. is it's for machinists. By machinists. machinists. And the reason why that yeah. is important is because when you go on to LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, there's a lot of clutter. Yeah. And if you just want to see what's happening in manufacturing, if you just want to display your work to the people who actually matter and not be in this huge ocean of social media and just you be gotta focused on machining, yep. this is what that is. And this can it's just going to be quicker and better for companies to find people and to promote their own products. It's brilliant. I got to hand it to you, Titan. I mean, I know you're my boss. Teamwork, and it kind of sounds Teamwork. like I'm <laughs> sucking up to you, but it's a genius idea. Yeah, man, I got to give it to you. It's Teamwork. a genius idea. And, it, and, it, and then when the app comes out in November, that's going to be like, the app is even better. The app is even better. If so we're not, possible. In, people know, like we're yeah. not really pushing it too hard right now, but it's growing and growing and it's working. And then when the app comes out, then it's going to be on fire. It's awesome. Yeah. Boom. Thanks guys. Yeah, yeah man. Boom, baby. Oh yeah. Hit it. Till Boom. next time. CNC machine. Yes, sir. We're out. Good stuff. Ow.